Have you ever wondered if increasing the conductor size reduces energy loss? Why don't we just use the thickest possible wire in transmission lines? Well, here's the catch. Thicker wires mean more copper or aluminum, which also means a higher initial cost. But if you make it too thin, the losses in power due to resistance shoot up, increasing energy cost. So what's the sweet spot? This is exactly where Kelvin's law comes in. A brilliant solution given by Lord Kelvin way back in 1881. It tells us how to choose a conductor size that gives the lowest total annual cost. And today, we'll break it down in a very simple way, with logic, math, and a real-world numerical example that will make this crystal clear. Let's begin with the first part of the annual cost, called the annual charge on capital outlay. This refers to the interest and depreciation on the capital cost of setting up the transmission line. Now, part of this cost, like the cost of insulators or some fixed components, doesn't change with the conductor size. That constant part is represented by P1. Then there's the cost that does depend on the conductor size, such as the conductor material itself and the part of support structure related to its weight. This is the variable part, and it's represented by P2 times A, where A is the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So the total capital-related cost per year becomes P1 plus P2A. Now let's move to the second part, the annual cost of energy wasted. This comes from power loss due to resistance, or what we commonly call I squared R loss. Since resistance is inversely proportional to the area, the energy loss is also inversely proportional to A. This cost is represented by P3 divided by A. Here, P3 is a constant that bundles together the current, length of the conductor, resistivity of the material, hours of operation, and cost of energy per unit. So it includes both technical and financial aspects tied to power loss. Now add these two components together. Total annual cost, which we now denote as C, becomes C equals P1 plus P2, A plus P3 by A. Now comes the optimization part. To find the most economical area, we differentiate the total cost with respect to A and set it to zero. So, DCDA becomes P2 minus P3 by a squared, which is equal to zero. Solve that and you get P2A equals P3 by A. Or in simple words, variable annual charge equals the cost of energy lost per year. That's Kelvin's law. To visualize this better, imagine a graph where the x-axis is the cross-sectional area A and the y-axis is the annual cost. The first curve is a straight line that represents P1 plus P2A, which increases with area. The second curve is a rectangular hyperbola, which represents P3 divided by A, decreasing as area increases. Now, if you add these two curves point by point, you get a third curve, the total cost curve, which is C equals P1 plus P2A plus P3 by A. This third curve has a distinct minimum point. That point is marked as P in the diagram, and it gives the most economical cross-sectional area. The beauty of this graph is how clearly it shows the trade-off between capital investment and energy loss, and how a balance between the two gives the optimal conductor size. Still confused? Let's solve an example, a really simple one. Suppose we have a one kilometer long two conductor cable supplying a constant current of 200 amperes throughout the year. The cost of the cable, including installation, is given as 20 A plus 20 rupees per meter where A is in centimeter squared. Energy costs 5 paisa per kilowatt hour and interest plus depreciation is 10% per year. The resistivity of the conductor material is 1.73 micro ohm centimeter. Let's calculate. First, find the resistance of one conductor. R equals rho L by A equals 0.173 divided by A ohms. Now energy loss in kilowatt hour per year is 2 times I squared RT divided by 1000. That is, 2 times 200 squared times 0 0.173 times 8760 divided by 1000 A, which comes out to 1 lakh 21,238.4 divided by A kilowatt hour. Now calculate the cost of this energy loss. 5 paisa per unit means 0 0.05 rupees per kilowatt hour. So, annual cost of energy lost equals 6061.92 divided by a rupees. Next, the cost of cable is 20 A rupees per meter. For one kilometer, that's 1,000 meters. So total cost equals 20,000 A rupees. Annual charge equals 10% of this, which is 2,000 A rupees. Now apply Kelvin's law, variable annual charge equals energy loss cost. So 2,000 A equals 6,062 by A. Multiply both sides by A. 2,000 squared equals 6,062. 
Solving this gives the equals root of 6062 by 2000, which is approximately 1.74 cm squared. So the most economical conductor size for this system is 1.74 square centimeters. Let's pause here. Do you think this mathematical approach still holds strong when dealing with fluctuating loads instead of constant ones? Or do you think practical factors like safe current density and mechanical strength matter more than economics sometimes? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I read every single one. If this explanation helped you understand Kelvin's law better, give this video a like and share it with your fellow electrical engineering friends. Don't forget to subscribe to Electrology for more in-depth power system concepts without any boring theory dumping. And if you truly value our work, consider hitting the thanks button or becoming a member through the join button. Your support keeps this channel running strong. See you in the next class.